Various fluids flow between the deep mantle underlying Yellowstone National Park and the overlying atmosphere. These fluids drive volcanic eruptions and geysers and transport significant amounts of heat from Earth's interior, fueling Yellowstone's various thermal features. A fluid is a material that continually deforms, flows, in response to an applied force. This definition is intuitive for liquids and gases and distinguishes these substances from cold solids. The study of how materials deform when a force is applied is called rheology. Viscosity is a property of a fluid that measures its resistance to deformation and its ability to flow. Viscosity can be measured with an instrument called a viscometer or rheometer, and the common unit of viscosity is the Pascal second, pi s. The viscosity range of fluids on Earth spans at least 26 orders of magnitude, from 1,0, gases, to greater than 1,0 pi s, Earth's mantle. The viscosity of liquids generally decreases with increasing temperature, hotter liquids flow more easily than cooler liquids, while conversely, the viscosity of gases generally increases with increasing temperature, cooler gases flow more easily than hotter gases. A panorama of the West Yellowstone Rhyolite lava flow taken along Highway 20, between the west entrance of Yellowstone National Park and Madison Junction. The flow is approximately 111,000 years old and has a volume of approximately 41 cubic kilometers, 10 Ni superscript 3. Let's examine the range of fluid viscosities in Yellowstone, starting with the mantle underlying the volcanic field. On human timescales, the mantle would be considered solid, and therefore not a fluid, but on time scales of thousands to millions of years, mantle flow at a rate of centimeters per year is the driving force behind plate tectonics and the volcanism of Yellowstone's hotspot. Diving shallower into the crust overlying the mantle, magnetotelluric and seismic imagery indicates that rhyolite and basalt magmas occur at depths ranging from about 4 kilometers, 2.5 miles. Rhyolite magma is characterized by a relatively high viscosity, similar to asphalt, while basalt has a low viscosity, similar to syrup. The high silica content of rhyolite makes it viscous and prevents gases from escaping easily, which can lead to explosive eruptions like the one that formed the Lava Creek Tuff and resulted in the collapse of the Yellowstone caldera. However, not all rhyolite eruptions in Yellowstone are explosive. The Yellowstone caldera is largely filled by very thick rhyolite lava flows, up to about 350 meters, 1,150 feet. Because rhyolite is so viscous, this lava takes months to years to form and cool. Yellowstone rhyolite has a distinctive texture that reflects how the lava flows formed. Basalt lava is found only outside the Yellowstone caldera, mostly in the northern part of the park near Mammoth Hot Springs. Basalt is also common in the Snake River Plain and craters of the moon west of Yellowstone National Park in Idaho. Basalt has a lower silica content than rhyolite and is therefore less viscous. Basalt lava flows can travel hundreds of kilometers from their source under certain conditions. Until about 14,000 years ago, Yellowstone was covered by glaciers for thousands of years. Like Earth's mantle, the ice that forms these glaciers appears solid on a human timescale, but on a longer timescale, the ice can flow. When glacial ice, solid water, melts, large amounts of low-viscosity liquid water are formed. The viscosity of water decreases with increasing temperature. At 93 degrees Celsius, 200 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the approximate boiling temperature of pure water at Yellowstone's altitude, the viscosity of water is almost six times lower than at temperatures just above freezing, 0 degrees Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit, although viscosity increases when there is material in the water, such as mud pots.